get him there in just a moment.
the next verse. Then those who feared the Lord talked with each other, and the Lord listened and heard. A scroll of remembrance was written in his presence concerning those who feared the Lord and honored his name. Those who fear the Lord talk to each other. He listens and he hears. And a scroll of remembrance, he remembers. Let's pray. Father God, I thank you for the day and for your love and for your grace. And I thank you for the fact that you hear us and you remember us. We are not forgotten. And we are not unheard. Lord, I pray this morning that you lead us and guide us to truth. And help us to grasp who you are and why it's important for us to cling to that in this day and age. In Christ's name, amen. Are you a good old days, folk? You know, it really is easy. And, and I catch myself. You know, when I was a kid, it used to drive me crazy when I'd hear my parents talk about the good old days. And I'd hear, oh, I remember when you could buy a candy bar for a penny. <laughs> And a bottle of pop costs half a cent. Back then we had half a cent. Because today none of these kids have half a cent. And, and, and then we go on and on about the way it used to be and how much better it was. And I'm thinking, hey, you're just old. That's what it is. You're just old. And you want to complain. And hey, guess what? I'm old. I can remember when I could buy gas for 45 cents a gallon. I can remember when I could... Uh, Get a bottle of pop and, and a candy bar for, for 30 cents. I can remember when uh, I could turn on the TV and not worry about who was in the room and being embarrassed. I remember, I'll age myself, I remember when the TV went off at night. How many remember that? Heaven! WTTV now concludes its broadcasting day in June. Broadcasting day. National Anthem play, remember that? And then what? And you know, it's time to go to bed. TV's on. I remember the good old days. Okay? And I will say, the world has changed and not in a lot of good ways. But here's what I know. I know that uh, the good old days are gone. And the future is coming like a freight train down the track. And it's much easier to set and lament the past than it is to commit yourselves to impact the present and alter the future. And I think that's what we have a tendency to do. I did it with my children, and, and, and I, I made that mistake. I don't want to make it again. With my children, I was always thinking about, well, I, I miss when they were this age. I miss when they were that age. You know, instead of just embracing the age they were, we can spend all afternoon, if you'd like, come out to the campground this afternoon. We'll sit and we'll talk all afternoon about the good old days. That will not change one thing about your world tomorrow. If that's all we do. This morning, I, I want us to, to maybe let go of the good old days for a minute and think about today. Here we are today because of what people did in the past. But in the past, they weren't thinking about the good old days. They were thinking about the future. Does that make sense? The people who laid down their lives were not thinking about how it used to be. They were thinking about how it needs to be. And I want us to think about that for a couple minutes this morning. I want you to know, first of all, God listens and God hears. We're out camping this weekend, and as we were camping, I remembered my childhood. And I mentioned to some of you this morning, it's amazing what you hear in a campground. Last night, 11.30 or so, I'm laying there in bed. Jack is sleeping a few feet, lives asleep, and I hear, I, I'm not kidding you, I, this is what I hear. Either put it in the hole or in the grass and quit hitting that board. They're playing cornhole. I'm hearing those bags. <laughs> and wherever they were, they were getting a lot of ones, but no threes. I remember when I was a boy, Gene 
Pro, you hear me talk about a lot. It took me and my cousin and one of my friends, and we were young. We were, you know, 15, 14, young and stupid. He took us out to Oklahoma, and we camped out, and, and, and we were laying there in our tent, and we were talking. And, of course, you know, when you're a kid, you don't think about anybody being around. And Gene's camping down the way, and so we're having typical teenage boy talk. And, and those of you guys in the room know that typical teenage boy talk is usually about typical teenage girls. And we're just talking and things and, and uh, talking about how much we love Jesus and how much we want to pray more. And, and just being boys. And laughing and cutting up and making jokes. Assuming that as we're doing this, there's no one in the world that hears us but us. And I'll never forget the next morning. We, we had this joke that had been running all night with this one line. The next morning, about quarter after six, I hear the zipper on our tent open up. And in pops Gene's head. Gene's in his late 60s. And he goes, ah! morning boys and he throws that line that we've been using all night right out there and you could just hear all three of us go oh. <laughs> he heard every word <laughs> we sheepishly come out of the tent and he smiles and says let's go eat breakfast and really gracious and patient with us and I was thankful for that but I remember thinking in that little world Nobody hears me, but those people right here, not realizing that Gene heard every word. And I think sometimes we feel like we're not heard. We have those moments, even when we're praying, we have those moments, even when we're praying, that, that we think, is God, let's be honest, have, have, you, have you not had that moment where it felt like your prayers just hit the ceiling and fell right back down? That he wasn't listening? Or didn't want to hear what you had to say? I want to tell you something. God hears everything. Not just what you say to Him, but what you say to each other. Go back to Malachi. They spoke to each other, and God listened and heard. He hears every conversation. Guys, the conversation you have with your wife in the morning before you leave, God hears it. What you're listening to on the radio on the way to work, he hears it. Why is the conversation you have on the phone with your friends? Or the text you send? Or the Facebook posts? Yes, God follows Facebook. He hears your thoughts and your words. He hears you. Every single word. All right? Take a look over at Psalms. Oh, there it is. Psalm 34. The eyes of the Lord are on the righteous, and his ears are attentive to their cry. The face of the Lord is against those who do evil, to cut off from the memory of the earth. The righteous cry out, and the Lord hears them. He delivers them from their troubles. Now let me say this. God does not listen to us the way we listen, the way I listen to my four-year-old. All right? Some of you might remember when your children were little. Some of you still have them. When a four-year-old is telling you about their day. You know what I'm talking about? And then this cartoon, and there was this cartoon, and this rabbit on the cartoon was chasing this, this other duck, and this duck was saying duck season, and the rabbit was saying rabbit season, and then the duck would say duck season, and the rabbit would say rabbit season, and then the duck would say duck season, and it would go back and forth, and then the rabbit would say duck rabbit season, and the duck would say duck season, and this guy would shoot the duck. And they're telling you all about their day. And then I was playing with my Legos, and I made this thing, but it didn't really look like this other thing that I wanted to look like. So then I took it apart, and I made this other thing. And when I was making that thing, I thought of some other thing. And then I was, and I need a drink, Dad. <laughs> <laughs> and what do we do? Uh-huh, 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 uh-huh. They walk out of the room, they're going to do something else. They've been gone for a half hour, and you're going, uh-huh. That's not listening. That's not listening. Your parents are laughing. You know you did it. That's not listening. I thought about it. I thought about it. Maybe God listens like a mother listens when she brings a newborn baby. It's funny how different the first one 
from the second, third, and fourth one, aren't it? <laughs> Remember the first one? You bring them home, you put them to bed, you know, and if you're lucky like we were, you had that little monitor you put right by their bed, and put the monitor in your room, and you lay down. I can turn that monitor off, she's still here. And then the baby's laying in there. <gasps> Did you hear that? I think it's Lisa's going there. Baby be sound asleep. Honey, honey, baby had made a noise. But sleeping. Go check. You know how a mother listens? A mother, you know, that baby could be, I, I could have one of our sons three miles away, and he'd say, ouch, and my cell phone would go off. What happened? <laughs> Did I hear him say, ouch? <laughs> moms have super sensitive hearing when it comes to kids, don't they? But here's the thing, even moms get tired. Even moms get tired and reach a point where they kind of, you, you know, their, their weariness overwhelms them. God never gets tired. Bye. Never. God never grows tired. And he never unhunts you. He listens. You know what I think? As odd as it sounds, God listens to us like a child listens when dad or mom are telling a story. When my boys were little, we'd go camping. I mentioned we'd camp a lot. Camping kind of a theme in our life. We would go camping. We would sit around the campfire. And they would say, Dad, tell us a story. And sometimes I'd tell them a true story, and sometimes I'd tell them a made-up story. But it was amazing. We'd be sitting there at the fire, and their eyes would be glued to me. And they would listen to every single word, and, and just completely captivated by that story. And then we'd be ready to go to bed, and we'd put them in, their, in the beds, and, and we would sit out by the fire. And I could hear them in the tent talking about the story, because they listened intently to everything I had to say. I want you to understand, that's how God listens to us. And here's us. God heard us over 200 years ago, actually over 300 years ago, as we begin to cry and lament for religious freedom and begin to look for a land where we could go and worship and live without the oppression of an overreaching government, without an official governmental church. And he heard us cry in the night, and he sent us this great place. God heard the cries of the world there in World War II as, a, as an insane individual saw it as his purpose to create a super race and eliminate what he considered flaws of the genetics system. God heard the cries of the Jews and he heard the cries of the Europeans. And we were living in a country, don't fool yourself, we didn't want to get in World War II. But God heard the cries of those who were hurting and being persecuted. And God got us into World War II. Took away our option. Because God knew that through us, He could bring about safety. God heard the cries in the South during the Civil War of people being treated like property. And he heard the cries of those who recognized that it was wrong. And although it was hurtful and painful and, and came at the cost of blood, freedom always does. God heard those cries. <clears throat> and he was attentive to those prayers. And he brought about a righteousness that did not exist before him. Through the lives of those who were talking to each other about the problem. God always hears. God hears us today. God hears us when we complain about the way it is, when we lament about the good old days. And God hears us when we talk about the future and our hopes and our dreams. And God is listening to see what we have to say about how we're going to change it. God hears. God does not only hear, but he also remembers. <coughs> how is remembering? How many of you think you have good memory? Wow! That's crazy! Three people. That bottom picture, if you look uh, just to, <coughs> excuse me, you'll notice there's a, like, a, a, on the top half, there's a brown patch. And to the right of that, it looks like there's a little bitty driveway. That is where 316 East Frank Street, Central Indiana, 47446 is. That was the address that I lived at when I went to 
first grade and we had to memorize our address. I remember my very first, well, that wasn't my first address, but my, I think I might even have a laser pointer. If you look right here, that's where the house was. There's a little sidewalk that comes up here. And if you walked in, there was a porch right here. You walk in the door, you go all the way to the back, and there's a, there's a little bitty tiny room. When I got a little bit older, I got to be in that room. There was a little deck on the back. I would go out there. There used to be Barlow's Grocery over here. Um, if you uh, uh, if you come down here, this used to be where my cousin Seth lived. And he and I would get together. Our cousin Tim lived over here. He's the one I told you about when he was beat up. Um, I can show you all kinds of places here. This is uh, the railroad track. This is what we used to call, and there used to be bricks there. That was called the boardwalk. And right over here is downtown Mitchell, big, big place, Mitchell. Uh, that's where the festival was. I get to use my pointer today. This is right. I told you I heard something. <laughs> This is where I went to first, second, and third grade. This is the library right here. If you go back through that library to this side, that's where my class was. This is the fire escape. When you're in third grade, that fire escape is a cool place, man. Let me tell you what, well, first grade too. You like to climb up there and slide down. And you weren't supposed to be in there unless it was an actual fire alarm. And I would get inside there, and I would like use my hands and stuff, and I would push myself back and get to the top and slide down. And one day I was up there, and Mr. Gentry, uh, George Gentry, Mr. Gentry was the principal, who was also an elder at our church. He comes down, and he stood right there. And he said, who's up there? And being the smart young man I am, I said, nobody! <laughs> or it was just a different time, but I came down there, and when I slid out, he had his knee like this, caught me, put me over, and whack, I got it right there. Got my first paddling right there, whoops. First paddling, whoop, didn't I get it. First paddling right there. It was also a pretty cool place when I was in junior high, but we won't tell those stories. <laughs> Isn't it amazing I can remember all that stuff from so long ago? That's 45 years ago. I'm talking about 45 years ago, I remember all that stuff. Pretty good memory, would you agree? Explain this to me. If I can remember all that, how is it that twice now in the last three months I've forgotten to wash the conditioner out of my hair before I got out of the shower? <laughs> I get out, I'm going to drop my hair, I'm like, why is my hair all sloppy? Oh, conditioner, get back in the shower. How is it I can remember all this stuff? And forget that there's conditioner in my head. Real simple. For whatever reason, this is still important to me. It talks about who I am and where I'm from. It speaks to how I became the man that I am, good, bad, or indifferent. It reminds me of, of my heritage. That that was good, that which wasn't. I can't forget because I can remember those places. It's ingrained in me. I remember it. But I don't remember those things that don't matter. I forget them. And I move on. And I let them go. So I guess the question is, what do we remember? The more important question is, what does God remember? Because God does remember. Go back to Psalms 105. He remembers His covenant forever. The word He commanded for a thousand generations. God never forgets. One of my favorite passages in the New Testament, and it was speaking of, 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 of conflict, and, and it says, God was gracious to them, for he remembered what they are. And I like that. He didn't say he remembered who they are. He said he remembered what they are. You know what he says? He remembered their flesh and blood and their human. God remembers that we're flawed. God remembers that we struggle. God remembers our hurts and our pains, our successes 
and our failures. God remembers all those scars that no one else sees. Have you ever had that moment in your life that you felt like you were the only one who remembered how bad it hurts or how upset you were? One of the things I've noticed over the years in, in my line is when I do a funeral, I look at the family, and sometimes I even tell them, in the next few months, the world is going to go back to being the world, and it will feel like they forgot about your love, and it will feel like they forget about you. The reason is, is they do. If it's not your loved one that dies, you go on with your life and kind of forget that someone's hurt. But then I remind them, God doesn't forget. In the next few months, as you hurt, know that God remembers your pain. He hears your cry, and He ministers to you. God remembers that when our country was founded, it was founded on godly principles. God remembers that throughout the years, when we struggled, He called us back to Him, and we were faithful. There have been several great revivals in the United States. Almost all of them following great conflict. But they existed. The last great revival, almost everyone in this room could remember, it happened shortly after 9-11. When we were reminded that we're not infallible or beyond struggle. Suddenly, when we're reminded of our need for God, what did we see? Congressmen who will argue and debate whether or not uh, uh, it's okay to say a prayer in school, standing on the steps of the Capitol, doing what? Praying. Why? Because they remember. God remembers. He remembers everything. Well, correction. What's the one thing God forgets? Anybody know? God forgets, not sin. Repented, confessed sin. Sin that he's forgiven. If we humbly kneel before God and confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive them. And when God forgives them, he forgets them. One of my favorite lines came years ago, and an individual said, you know, if you walk up to God and say, do you remember that sin I committed two years ago? He would look at you and say, nope. Sure don't. It's amazing that he hears us. And he remembers us. He forgets our sin. But he remembers our struggles. And he's faithful. Malachi says that those who talked among each other, God listened and heard. And he wrote a book of remembrance. And he remembered them. But he did not forget them. Now, what, what does any of that have to do with memorial? <clears throat> we started out, we talked about the good old days, right? Remembering the good old days. And I mentioned that our world isn't, doesn't look much like the world I grew up in, right? We have all kinds of new conflicts. Let's be honest. I'm not going to lie. If you made me king of the world, we'd probably go back to 1940, 19, early 50s. I would, I would probably do away with the internet. I would do away with cell phones. I would do away with 24-hour uh, television. Because I'm not so sure it's that good for us. All right? Now, let me be the first to admit, I love my computer. I like being able to do instant research. I like my cell phone. I love playing Angry Birds while I sit by the campfire. <coughs> I'll be... The first to acknowledge, I enjoy this technology. But the world I live in has slowly moved from a world that honors God and, and, and serves God and has God at its core to a world where a minority acknowledges God and the rest serve themselves. Folks, I, I'm going to say something, and, and, and I believe you, if you search your heart, you'll agree, and most of you have already come to this reality. We do not live in a godly nation anymore. The United States of America stopped being a Christian nation somewhere in the last 10 to 15 years, if not before. There are Christians here, and we're more Christian than some other places, 
But we're not a godly nation. We are not governed by godly principles anymore. We are not directed by the Word of God anymore. We live to and for ourselves. And it would be very easy, as it's said in the book of Malachi, for us to go, you know what? It is what it is. What's the point? Why even try? Well, let me remind you. Why try? Because God listens. And He hears. And He remembers. Okay? Stay with me now. God listens. He hears and he remembers. Now let me show you one more verse. Second Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14. You may have heard this verse a lot. You will hear it again. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves, pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, I will hear from heaven. I will forgive their sins and I will heal their land. If the nation called America, that's not what it says, is it? If the Republicans who live in America, if the Democrats, as someone says, there's no affiliation there. If my people called by my name, by the way, what do we call ourselves again? Pretty sure we get that from Jesus Christ, his name. If my people, called by my name, will humble themselves and picket all the evil places in the world and post on Facebook. <coughs> All the political views that reflect Christianity will tell everyone else how bad they are. <coughs> will sit and reminisce about how good it used to be. Am I even close? If my people, called by my name, will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, I will hear. I will forgive. I will heal. Now I'm telling you, God did not stop listening in the last 20 years. And if God is listening, and God remembers His promises. And He remembers us. There is only one reason things won't get better in our world. Is we're waiting on someone else to do what we're called to do. We're too busy pointing our fingers at who's at fault. Instead of owning our own failure. God did not call me to stand on the picket line of somebody who doesn't agree with me politically or religion. God did not call me to write articles about how bad the world has got. God did not call you to sit around and lament about how much better things used to be. What God called us all to do today is to hear those around us and their cries. I said God listens to you. Do you realize that you live in a community where people every day are trying to tell you they hurt you? But we rarely listen. Do you realize we live in a world where people are suffering and crying out and we're too busy posting on Facebook a picture of our puppy? Guilty. And there's nothing wrong with posting a picture of your puppy, but there is something wrong when we're so busy in our own little world that we're not listening to those around us. 
We're not hearing their needs. And we're not remembering that we're called to feed the hungry and clothe the naked and to serve a community. You not got anything? Okay, that's fine. Uh, oh, the piano's there. Okay, we'll figure it out. Um, God listens, we should listen. God remembers. This morning I want us to remember that God didn't just call us to listen, but to serve. I want us to remember that those who've served before us have created an opportunity for us to do the same. I mentioned that earlier I did funerals. When I do a funeral, one of the things I always try to say is, we talk about honor and remember the past, okay? When we talk about that, sometimes we think that means, well, I'll wear a pin that says, I remember them and I honor them, or, or we're all, I'll carry a coin that says I remember them or honor them. Let me tell you how you honor those people who sacrificed in the past. You live a life worthy of that sacrifice. And you be willing to make one too when the time comes. That's how we make an impact. God calls us to listen and to remember. This morning, if you're here and you feel like you've been forgotten, I want you to know God hasn't ever forgotten that He loves you and He's faithful. If you're here this morning and you feel like your prayers haven't gotten past the ceiling for a few weeks, I want you to know that God is listening and He wants to hear. We're going to stand and, and we can sing a cappella. We can handle this. We're going to stand and we're going to sing hymn number 650. Know that God hears you sing. And He hears you pray if you need to pray. So you pray and you sing and you offer yourself to the Lord. In number 650, the first and last verse. <coughs>
Do that for a week. Just do it for a week and see if it doesn't change how you see this world. All right, let's close up. And you hear us. Thank you for never leaving us alone. Never forgetting that we need you. Teach us to remember how much to be faithful as well. Thank you for your love in this day. In Christ's name, amen. Kenny's going to come and do the announcements and things here. I just have one quick one before he gets here. Live and die. Oh, wait. Never mind. Let's just have